Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. Julie, we're picking up where we left off yesterday. We are on point number... We are on point number nine, and we're talking about how to eliminate your fear of the phone forever. That's right. Before Julie gets to point number nine, I want to remind all of you, because I had some messages on Instagram, Julie, Mm -hmm. people were asking us about uh, joining Premier Coaching. Yes, you can join Premier Coaching right now for free. And yes, it's very simple to do so. Just simply go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com, and you can join. Or if you'd like to join on your mobile phone, you can just simply, well, obviously, you can go to premiercoaching.com. Or you can text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. But if you love this podcast and tens of thousands of you listen to us every single day, and now we have another, you know, it looks like we're going to have tens of thousands of you watching us over on YouTube. Well, that tells me that you're absolutely going to be blown away by what you get in Premier Coaching. Today's podcast, all of our podcasts, they're really at best training. Coaching is something completely different. It's a different level of learning. And for those of you looking for the next natural step in your real estate businesses, well, guess what? It's Premier Coaching. So go to premiercoaching.com or text the word Premier to 47372. Remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Julie, point number nine. Point number nine, we're talking about eliminating your phone fear forever. Point number nine, listen more than you speak. Now, I wrote this point with several coaching clients in mind. One of them is uh, Brad in Orlando, who has really gotten much, much, much better at this. He's been in coaching with me personally for over a year, but also a newer coaching client, Gabriel in Los Angeles. This is for you. Listen more than you speak. Listen to the prospect's answers so that you can have more of a conversation. Can I give, let's, I want to actually, there's two people that just popped to my mind yes. um, that you have had personal interactions with. Okay. And I want to compare and contrast these two ladies. Okay. Okay. And one of them uh, is a friend of ours, um, and she's part of our EXP group, Carrie Scholl. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the other person is someone whose name we won't mention. Okay. Okay. Because she's not involved in our business. She's a, sort of a new friend. Okay. I think I know who you're talking about. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. It starts with an S. Yep. All right. So we are interacting, like Carrie Shaw. Uh, let me just give you the background on Carrie. In 2021, her team sold $732 million of real estate. She's one of the top five agents in the world. That's for the year, not cumulative. Yeah, that's right. They've sold billions and billions of dollars in real estate. You know, the Carl Sagan way of saying it, billions and billions. billions. Right. Those of you who are a certain age will appreciate that, you know, stupid joke. But in any event, uh, so she is very interesting in that she has all the reasons in the world to dominate every conversation to, you know, frankly, act like most agents do, where it's all about me all the time. And she doesn't. Carrie is one of these, again, one of these people who would be, you would expect to be a big egotistical talking about herself constantly wanting to like, just have you finish talking so she can start telling you about her. And she doesn't Carrie is very, very good at asking questions and listening. And when you see uh, people interact with Carrie, um, and we, cause we've spoken at her events before her and Dan Lesniak's events. And again, they're part of our EXP realty group. And I believe that she's going to be, and her and her husband, their team is going to be the number one team at eXp Realty. And if you're thinking about joining eXp Realty and you want to, by the way, know why some of the largest teams and brokers are joining eXp Realty, well, we've made it simple for you. Just text the letters eXp to 47372. Text the letters eXp to 47372. Or if you're ready to join eXp and you want to join with us like Carrie and Dan did, Julie and I would love the opportunity to be your sponsors of eXp Realty. Text me directly at 512-758-0206. Julie and I are fortunately in a position to have coaching clients and long-term friends that are both new agents and some of the most seasoned veterans agents in the world. That's what happens when you've been doing something for a couple decades. You actually have the credibility, the actual reputation of being able to help people move the needle in meaningful ways over long periods of time. So if you're interested in joining Julie and I at EXP, we would love the opportunity to be your sponsors. Just text me directly at 512-758-0206. So in my interactions, our interactions with Carrie, the big takeaway is is that she is successful as she is 
because she asks good questions and then she shuts up and she listens and asks questions based on what she just heard. Mm -hmm. And when she's in that mode, which is a uh, learning mode, she never talks about herself. No, not at all. She, she doesn't just ask the questions, but she does indeed listen to the answers and then has a logical, well thought out follow-up question, which shows that she's learning. That's right. And she, the, that's a quality, by the way. If you want to know, you hear people talking about, oh, that person has the it factor. That person has mm -hmm. some sort of je ne sais quoi. That's it. It's the ability to uh, not have to be heard. That's one of the key things, frankly, in my life I've worked towards. Those of you guys listening to this podcast will laugh when I say that, but it's still true. <laughs> what, it, when, it, uh, when I'm out and about and I'm talking with other humans and I'm not on the podcast performing for all of you guys, frankly... I try to say as little as I can and listen as much as I can and ask great questions. I intentionally, Julie and I do the same thing. We don't want to be the center of any no. conversation ever in our real lives because frankly, we leave it all in the field for you guys every day. And when we're out and about socializing, we'd much rather be wallflowers than we would be the center of attention. True. It is true. And you can learn so much more about the other person, about what they do for a living, what businesses they're running, what's interesting to them when you listen more than you speak. Well, we had a conversation yesterday with a guy at the gym uh, who is an incredibly famous uh, financier yeah. who has six tickets on, I forget what, you know, Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns but seat, six permanent seats on the field for the Cleveland Browns. And after this conversation offered to fly us up to Cleveland with him to watch a football game on his private, on his G650 or something. And it's just from the interaction of us being genuinely interested in him and what he does. And, and he does career. a lot of very interesting uh, research interesting. and development and investing and all these things that are just fascinating, which we wouldn't know a single thing about if we just made it all about us all the time. Exactly. But that's the thing that when you are in a position and like, if you want to know, like, think about this. If you want to have people love you, don't talk about yourself like ever, as little as possible. Ask questions about them. Imagine this. You walk into a room full of folks and you're going to want to, you know, talk to certain people, avoid certain people. It's just your natural, you know, what is it about the people you want to avoid? The ones that talk about themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. The ones that you want to talk to, the ones that make you feel good when you talk to them. Why is that? It's because they listen to what you're saying and they show genuine interest in you. And you, how, how do you know they're showing genuine interest in you? Oh, I know why. Because they're listening to what you say and asking questions about what you just said. They're not circling every damn millisecond, every conversation back to be about themselves versus mm -hmm. the other person that we're getting to know. And this person wouldn't know a question if it landed on her head. No, absolutely not situationally aware, not curious about anything, has not done anything except incessantly talked about herself and businesses and things like that, which, you know, I'm a little bit interested in. That's fine. But because it was so extreme and kind of tone deaf, I'm trying to maybe say it in a nice well, she way. She doesn't listen to the podcast, so just use okay. your real words. <laughs> yeah, not situationally aware. And to the point where it was becoming a bit obnoxious and very, at least to me, off-putting. It was abrasive to me. I, why? I mean, it's okay. I think it's but normal why? for five minutes when you meet somebody, but not continuously. Because, uh, I, you know, there was an element of some of the things that she said with confidence were not even really accurate or true. She knew she had an idea of what we did for a living. And she was talking with this massive level of authority about real estate and everything coming out of her mouth was utter crap. And, and she was, but she said it with confidence, right? She was saying it with confidence. So she was a bit of a BS artist basically at the end yes. of the day. And really uh, the bottom line was, is that when you are around quality, really high end, you know, thoughtful people like Carrie and like our other, some of the other people yeah. we've been blessed to have in our lives. And you're around somebody who has yet to figure out that it's not all about them all the time. Yes. Uh, it is incredible. The contrast. It, it's, it's very, it, it's almost offensive because that showed lack of business maturity, lack of social and emotional consciousness. Okay. Lack of curiosity. She seemed massively insecure. Yes. And so you know, forgiveness for maybe there's a reason for that insecurity. And this was that, but, but still conversationally very, uh, just abrasive. I let, so you were talking about people that you avoid because you know, they're all about them all the time. And that's the hundred percent. The conversation is going to be, that would be somebody I would avoid if we were at a party or we we're, you know, maybe amongst other people where I could have a conversation with somebody more interesting because yeah. ultimately my impression was coming away from that, that she was just boring. 
Yeah, well, but why, interesting. why are we telling you guys this? Because your reaction to other people is the same. You, you're relating, hopefully, to what we're saying. You've had experiences similar to what we're saying. But what I want you to be honest with yourself is, are you like Carrie? Or are you like this other person? Are you the one that's going to be asking thoughtful questions, actually listening for the intent of getting to know the person, understanding their perspective? Or are you somebody that's going to spout off and make it all about Fire yourself? Fire hose about yourself. Most agents, you guys know the answer. If you don't believe and it's been reinforced with all the social media, the never ending stream of narcissism about all about me all the time. Yeah. That is not something that's going to ultimately attract people to you. And I'm going to share with you guys something. It's fascinating too. The... Julie and I, again, we've essentially gone from, when we got married, we had a car cleaning and detailing business for God's sake, right? I mean, we have, we did not come from money. We were definitely not born on third base. Hell, we didn't even not know, even know where the damn baseball diamond or let no. alone field was. Okay. We didn't even have tickets once we found it to get in. But these are all, you know, facts. And we sold over a hundred homes our first year. Now I'm talking about myself and sounding like a hypocrite, but I'm trying to make a point. Over our careers and our lives, what we have discovered are the most successful financially successful, just keeping it practical and tactical people mm -hmm. act like Carrie. They have, and we modeled that behavior when we were in our, frankly, our thirties is really where we started to observe it. When you're around more successful people, they have confidence. They have this air about them of not needing to be the center of attention. And that is intoxicating because there's something about them. When you're around somebody and they just have this quality about them, you want to be around them more. Isn't that what you want in your life ultimately if you want to be successful? Because remember, this is a people helping business. And if you're showing sincere interest in... Now, some of you don't know how to show sincere interest in people because you're so used to talking about yourselves. And here's the way you do it. Practice. Learn to listen. Ask mm -hmm. questions. And when you feel yourself wanting to talk about yourself, curb it. Hold it back. It, just keep that, you know, what's it called? Keep that tucked in, right? Keep it tucked in. And look for your use of personal pronouns. The personal mm -hmm. pronouns will always betray your ego. That's right. And related, to, similar to that, okay? It, and this is mostly a rookie mistake, but really anybody who doesn't have the experience of having more and more calls that where you're actually working on this. So listen more than you speak. Listen to their answers so you can have a better conversation. Don't keep interrupting just so you can keep your script going. This is something I listen to agents calls all the time. This is an early on learning how to prospect thing where you haven't finished the answer to the question that was a scripted question. And I'm, I'm like so anxious to get to the next thing that I didn't even really listen to what you said, which makes my next question kind of out of sync and maybe not even make sense. Well, let's explain to them how to do that. So when you are using our script and you're talking with folks, and what a lot hap will happen oh, probably 30% of the time, they're going to ask a question that if you answered that question, you're going to go down a rabbit hole yeah. and you're going to lose the opportunity to pre-qualify them and set, them an, set an appointment. Sometimes they say things and just because some, if they're like, it's frankly, it's like farts, right? Just because people say things don't mean you need, you, doesn't not mean, you, did I say farts? You did. <laughs> Does not mean wondering you, where this is going. you need to react to them right now. I'm trying to think myself where this is going. So when somebody says something, you can, like you're trying, you're pre-qualifying them, you're going through your scripts, you're following your conversation outlines. And then they ask you something is completely out of left field. That's a very interesting question, Mr. Seller. Let's address that in a second. By the way, you can also do that on listing appointments. Yes. And here's what you'll soon discover. Most people will say things and forget that they said them the second the last breath leaves their mouth of what they just said. They're not even thinking before they talk. They're going to give you an objection. You think, well, I got to whack that objection down. Right. No, you don't. You just acknowledge it. Mr. Seller, I appreciate the fact that you had a bad experience with your previous agent. Um, and so let's move forward to make sure that doesn't happen again. You don't have to attack it. Right. Don't attack it. And what some of you guys are trained to say in that particular example is you're, some of you pile on and start talking crap about the other agent. But what you didn't know is that other agent happens to have been their best friend from high school. And yeah, that agent did not sell their house and maybe they had a bad experience. But now that seller hates you because of all the crap mm -hmm. you just piled on this other agent. Which was massively unprofessional and shows lack of experience and all the rest. This is where skills come in. And once you learn these types of things and you practice these types of things, you will be able to learn to start setting one pre-qualified listing appointment per day. Isn't that ultimately what you mm -hmm. want in your life? You do, but you have to work for it. You have to put in the effort. You have to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Julie, let's roll the next point. Yes, point number 10. Remember, we're getting rid of your phone fear forever. So point number 10, stop taking everything so personally and making things so difficult. 
When somebody doesn't need to buy or sell today, that is not about you. They just don't need your help currently. It's not no forever, it's just no for now. Learn to say next. Your job is to find the people who do need you, so keep dialing. The next call could be the best call, but you won't know that if you take everything so personally and give up. You have a boat in the water, and this is a big boat. You can fit an unlimited number of people in this boat. It's a lifeboat. You're in the middle of uh, the North Atlantic. The water is cold. There are sharks in the water. There's no other boats around. There are people in the water all around you. You're standing on your boat, and you're saying, and you have blankets in your boat. Matter of fact, your boat has warm tea and cocoa and coffee and everything. Your boat it's is nice in there. You, you, you want to be in your boat, so you're saying, "Come to my boat. I will, you know, grab you. We, you can be in my boat. We can be here together. You can be safe. You can be secure. I will make it so that you are able to live and not get eaten by a shark or become an, uh, in an ice cube." And here's what you discover. You're shouting at the top of your voice. You can see the reflections of the people distant in the horizon because there's just enough starlight. You can see them. You, the water's relatively calm. There's not a lot of waves. It's just, you know, just sitting there. You're shouting, come to my boat. I will save you. You can see the people in the distant horizon looking over their shoulder. They see you. They could swim back around. They could get in your boat. But what they do is you can vaguely hear them say, and this is what they're saying, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to find my own boat. I'm going to swim to an island. I'm going to befriend a shark and we're going to, he's going to take me to, I don't even know where. We're going to do it my way. We're going to do it my, okay. Let those people go. You cannot, you cannot save them, literally. Then you're going to see other people who are swimming away from you, swimming towards you. But what they're really doing is they're swimming in circles. Swimming in circles, swimming in circles. And you're saying, you know, come in my boat. I will save you. Come in my boat, I will save you. But they're swimming in circles. Oh, I might. No, I'm going to think about it. No, I'm going to do my own thing. No, I'm going to try this. No, I'm going to this. I'm going to the other thing. I'm going to uh, whatever. They're swimming in circles. And eventually what happens, one of three options. So people get tired of swimming and they sink to the bottom. Or they uh, decide to swim away. And they, you know, frankly, in God knows where. Uh, or they sw uh, decide to find their senses and they swim towards you. The only people in life, in your any kind of sales profession, that you should ever ever put your best energies towards are the ones that are swimming towards you. That's the reason long-term lead follow-up doesn't work because those are the people that are swimming away from you. Those are the people that are swimming in circles. So in order for you to have enough people swimming towards you, you need to generate every day. When you generate, you do not need to tolerate. I am here to save you. I'm in my boat. Swim towards me. And you know what? You look down. You are Before you are focusing on the horizon, you are looking way off into the distance of the people that were swimming away from you, or you're seeing the people swim in circles. But what you didn't realize, there are people all around your boat that had their hands in their air and say, yes, pull me up. That's what happens when you guys are focused on the wrong thing. That's when you're focused on, well, so for example, uh, I'm going to build a long-term uh, lead generation funnel marketing plan. I'm going to create a brand around myself. Where, What group of people are you in? When you're, are you the swimming away, swimming in circles? You're probably the swimming in circles if mm -hmm. that's your mindset, right? Yep. The people that are joining our coaching program, and frankly, the people that are successful in life in general, are the ones that want to stop screwing around and they just want to take action. If you want to be successful now because of this market, stop screwing around, take action, call the people who already have their hands in the air and say, yes, I want to sell my house. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know all of you do. There's no way you don't understand what I just mm -hmm. said, but not all of you are ready to hear the lesson. Not all of you are ready to learn from other people's mistakes. You want to go and make your own mistakes. And I honestly, I wish you luck. I hope you don't become shark food. I hope you do find what you're looking for. But for the rest of you who want to make this most of this market because you're ready to be of service to other people, once you have the skill set that's going to put you in a position to be in that position, we're here for you. And we encourage you to join Premier Coaching. Text the word Premier to 47372 or go to premiercoaching.com. And remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Julie, let's give them another point. One more point and then we've got to watch that. Yep, okay, number 11, know your ratios. This is such a blessing of the market you guys live in. It's crazy. Know your ratios and realize that you don't need crazy numbers of transactions to make an amazing income. The average commission in the country today is at least $10,000 per deal. That means you're making twenty grand per year on one deal per month. How many contacts, that's a conversation with a decision-making adult about real estate, do you take to set one qualified closable listing? Work for a ratio of one out of each 10 contacts becoming an appointment. And we do have coaching clients that have even better ratio than that, but they have worked on, you know, the previous one through 10 points in order to polish up their skills. 
The better you are on the phone, the better you are in person at the door, the smaller that ratio becomes, assuming that you are talking to people who have those good ratios, people who have houses to sell and not just cold doors, right? And I'm, I'm going to point something out too. Um, so when Julie and I started selling real estate, our average sale price was like 200 grand. And by the time we finished our career, our average sale price was close to a million dollars. Why? Because we changed markets. So if you're not, if you want a higher average sale price, sometimes all it takes is moving down the road, or in our case, moving about a half hour, forty-five minutes away where we started selling real estate. Or prospecting expensive expireds in the right areas. Right. Or moving to a different market altogether. If you're mm -hmm. tired of the long winters, why don't you move down to Florida, where the average sale price is wherever you land is probably going to be at least eight hundred thousand or a million dollars. Because here's the wonderful thing: when you know how to proactively generate, and you follow our system. Your skills are transferable. What you say, how you say it, what you do, how you do it, it's transferable. You don't need to create a new campaign. You just need to plant your butt and you know on the phone and make these proactively generation calls. And you can build massive momentum quickly in any market. A lot of our um, best clients, what they would do, wanting to move out of, say, for example, their you know cold mist cold midwestern town into a place where the average sale price was three or four x where they were and there was no winter is what they would get, do is get a license and say for example moving from michigan to florida and they get licensed in both mark both markets and then they would start prospecting in both mm -hmm. markets and they would prospect ahead of time so you're going to you know florida for two weeks for spring break or whatever set up three or four listing appointments prospect out of michigan you can use google voice and you can make it so your phone number appears local and start you know proactively lead generating set the expired listing appointments and actually do the real work so that when you go there, you're actually taking listing, uh, listings in your new market. That way, when you land in your new market, when you move down there, you've got an inventory ready to sell. You guys get it? You can do that when you have the skill set that we teach you. Look, we do teach you how to do all the social media. Julie and I are all over social media, but we know ultimately in real estate, what unlike virtually every other business there is out there, you don't really need to be a, pro, a proficient marketer to generate leads because the leads are everywhere in real estate and they're free. Expired listing leads are the ones we've been focusing on this pod, uh, podcast series. But there's a lot of other listing leads you guys can go, be going after as well that don't cost you anything. So I ask all of you, I challenge all of you, make the most of this market. Make the most of the fact that most agents in your markets don't have the skill set to you know proactively lead generate. You have a window of opportunity before the rest of the market catches up and realizes what Julie and I have been saying forever is the smartest move if you're genuinely interested in, frankly, helping a lot of people, making a lot of money, and ultimately being in alignment with being of service to other people and being in alignment with really what makes you more than proud, more than happy. It makes you feel like you have a purpose in life. That's what we want you guys to experience in your lives. And then once you have this knowledge, pass it along to other people. That ultimately is how you pay us back. In addition, you know, that's for the podcast. In addition, do subscribe to the podcast if you're on our YouTube channel. Do give us a five-star review um, at, on iTunes. Help us get the word out so other agents don't have to needlessly suffer through this transitioning market. Anything you'd like to say to these guys? Well, I hope they're taking all these points seriously because there's not a single thing that we have talked about that you can't personally conquer Maybe you don't fall victim to all 10 points. Maybe it's just one sticking thing that you've got to work on. Maybe you've got to just get better at your scripts and stop interrupting people and stop struggling with what to say next. Maybe that's your point to own and do something about. Maybe you're just so, you know, non-situationally aware. You don't even know there's real estate happening all the way around you because you have to polish your scripts and know the right questions to ask. Work on these things, guys. None of this is hard and none of it costs you money. You know what I have to think? Right now, we're probably between all the different, you know, portals, basically, or all the different media platforms. At least 20,000 people, you know, view this or listen to this. They'll mm -hmm. consume today's show. Yes. So I know statistically, I, I can only guess how many are actually going to use this information to today go make money. The one swimming towards the boat? It, or not not just that. Maybe they're in the boat helping us Hopefully. save more people. Yes. Right? I mean, I am. Those are the frank. Though, that thought motivates the hell out of me. Me too. Because I know there are people out there, and I hope it's a high percent, frankly, that are going to do something with this information. You listened to us yesterday, and we told you techniques to go and proactively lead generation generate on behalf of your buyers to get listings. We told you uh, how many of you are actually doing anything with it. What the hell are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You know, why are you even hesitant to take action on all these things? It doesn't take a lot of time. 
doesn't take a lot of skill. It just takes effort. Oh, by the way, the snow's melted, so you don't have that as an excuse anymore. Speaking of which, I have to call Patrick Murphy in non-snowy Columbus, Ohio, ah. who is very proactive and does the things that we're talking about. But we will see how he did last week. He's That's my next right. call. And you're five minutes late. I, I apologize. That's okay. So you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.